In this video, I'm going to update you on all of my jewel allocations, what I'm doing with them, how I'm taking care of them, which ones have been easier, which ones have been harder, and also tell you which ones are still on my wish list. Hey, Pablo from Allure and Inc here, and I'm so excited to be making this video because this is an update to the first video that I made ever, and it was about growing all of the Jewel Alocasias. So in that video, I basically ended up just compiling all of my Jewel Alocasias along with the normal non-Jewel ones because I did not have that many, but <laughs> I've been busy with Palm Street and I've gotten so many of my wishlist plants that in this video, I'm going to split them into two. This one is going to cover all of the Jewel Alocasias which by definition, you know, is something that stays a lot smaller, a lot more compact. And the other ones that get bigger are going to have their own separate video. All right, so, so up first is going to be my current favorite jewel alocasia, which is alocasia cuprea. If you remember, this was the plant that was growing like the biggest in my first video, and it was the first sort of jewel alocasia that I got that I was like obsessed over. And it has been a really rewarding experience. Very fairly quickly, you know, after that video, I transferred it into LECA and it has been sitting in LECA in this container ever since. The only major difference that I've done with it is adding some pond around its base because I think alocasias do all of their new growth in the upper part as it's putting out new leaves, the new corms and the new roots are going to come out of that upper part of the stem. So I think this is like the equivalent of air layer in it. And I'm just testing out to see if it helps keep the amount of leaves um, longer because the plant feels secure and all of the roots that are coming out are finding like nutrients and soil and now I water you know through here down and every single watering I am adding nutrients so this plant currently has 10 leaves you can see over here you have three you have some other three and then here you have three this one is the oldest of the leaves that we have and this one is the newest of leaves that we have this plant actually had already had two inflorescences and I was not sure if I was going to cut them or not. What I ended up doing was I did not cut them. I collected the pollen and then I tried to create a hybrid just for fun. Um, but what I learned was that this plant did not skip a beat, even if it had two inflorescences maturing. New leaves were still being pushed out. New leaves were still coming out. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do with this plant in particular next time it blooms is I'm going to let the inflorescence like go through its entire process and just make sure that I am really really on top of it when it comes down to its watering and its nutrients so it doesn't lose any leaves and it does not skip a beat. Now if it produces more than two flowers I'm probably just going to cut the other ones as they're coming out because I feel like I already let the plant go through its entire experience. Overall I recommend you having this plant and here's the biggest tip that I'm going to give you with cuprea is that you should give it less light. So as I'm growing all of the different alocasias, mostly the, the jewel ones, um, I'm learning that, duh, not all of them are the same, right? Not all of them have the same conditions. And that has a lot to do with where they're originally from. Some of them are from a lowland rainforest, which is why they kind of really need that wet, moist soil all the time. Other ones are literally growing on lime rock. So that's why they need this more a sort of like pond does really well for them. So what I'm learning is, you know, every single species has its own nuances and I'm here to share them with you as I'm learning them. So the nuance with this Alocasia cuprea is that it does not like a lot of light. It mostly grows in like on the under the canopy with a lot of vegetation on top of it. And that makes the leaves sort of uh, look up and be really light sensitive. So whenever you put too much light on it, they're going to start looking down kind of like you see this one is. And that is completely normal in alocasias. That's what they do when they receive too much light. They kind of like bail out of, uh, they want to remove themselves. But out of all of them, this is the most light sensitive. I had it um, under the normal grow light first, like the other ones, and I did not like it. It was starting to push away from it. I moved it here, which is further out from another grow light. It continued to push the leaves away. And now it's literally sitting on like a top shelf over there, um, receiving light, but not too much. And that has been sort of like the spot that it has liked it. So you might need to experiment a little bit and move it here, move it there. But always remember that this plant likes a lot of nutrients and less light. So Alocasia cuprea actually comes in a few variegated versions. I am obsessed with one in particular, which is the Alocasia pink. And it comes out with this beautiful light metallic pink. There's another one that I think they call it like latte or something like that. It's more like an Orea, but it comes out more like a brown muddy color. 
Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I have seen a few of my friends on Instagram that have some beautiful variegated cupreas. So if you're interested in this plant, I definitely recommend that you buy the normal for version, non-variegated first. Make sure you get the gist of it, particularly the light, and you make it look appealing to you. Then I would take this, the jab at the variegated version, just because they're still really expensive and not quite in tissue culture as readily available yet. Like I'm sure they're going to be there within like a year and the price are going to drop. But right now, a variegated cupra is going to go above $300 for a corm or even a very, very small plant. Overall, out of 10, I would rate cuprea around an 8. So it has been really easy to adapt. It has been really easy to transplant to or repot. It has been easy to keep a lot of leaves on it. But the hard part has been A, getting the leaves to size up to like a massive level. And two, it has been finding the right amount of light. Up next is a classic. This is Alocasia Maharani. And this is a hybrid between Alocasia Mellow and Alocasia Reginula Black Velvet, which I have both and I'm going to show them to you. But the reason I want to talk about this one first is because this one is my favorite out of all three of them. Alocasia Maharani has to be the Alocasia that I recommend everybody to get if you're starting out with Alocasias. It's super chill. I've had a few of them and it's never had an issue holding many leaves, producing corms, um, repotting, adapting. It gets huge, massive leaves as, you know, as big as Alocasia jewels will go. So they might get a little bit bigger sort of like this. Um, and it still tends to get pretty compact, at least with the petiole length. So Alocasia Maharani is one that I recommend. I, well, I could not recommend enough. So if you don't have one, I definitely would put this in your wish list. Um, this plant is sitting just in a Leca mixture with a little bit of perlite and it just enjoys it. I water it with every single watering and it has never shown any sort of um, nutrient like overload when they get the little yellow tipping here. This plant, I think, Cupra is also similar to it, but this plant does not require as much humidity. So as we're going down this list, just keep in the back of your mind that all of the alocasias that are kind of like leathery, that they are thick, that you feel and it feels almost um, like fake, those tend to do a lot better in lower humidity compared to the ones that are going to be really thin and velvety. I'm not saying they need like a 20% humidity, no. They still need between 50 and 75 but they're a lot easier to transition into lower humidity or to adapt to lower humidity than the ones that are going to be super, super velvety. So Alocasia Maharani is one of my favorite ones. I would rate this plant a 9 out of 10, mostly because it's just been such a good plant to me. The reason I deducted one point, and I have not experienced that yet with this, it was last time when I managed to get it to the flowering size, Maharani was the one species that would put out between four to five inflorescence um, back to back to back to back. And that made it into not such a great experience because personally, I think I was not putting enough nutrients. So I will make a, that change this time around. But eventually after the third or fourth flower, I was just cutting them and I'm like, I don't know what else to do for you. So the, that's the reason once it gets really mature, let me know if you're having a different experience. But so far, um, it produces a lot of inflorescences. So Alocasia Maharani is definitely one that you should have. Alocasia Maharani also comes in a few versions of variegated. It comes in the Albo, which I personally think is the cutest. It also has a pinkish one, and I have seen some more Orea. And I'm, of course, I'm playing footage of all of them. Um, this is one that I would love to get in the Albo version. I think it's beautiful, honestly. I mean, some leaves are just incredible. But this is really unstable, as all variegated Alocasias are. So I would definitely not be paying the hundreds of dollars that they go for right now. Um, this will be in tissue culture. I already know it's available in certain spots in certain tissue cultures. So just have a little bit of patience because I guarantee that this one is coming down and I'll be there um, waiting to buy one. Up next is Alocasia Reginula Black Velvet. This is one of the parents of Maharani. Honestly, the parent of a bunch of hybrids because it tends to be a lot easier, I think, to hybridize with it. This is another plant that I've had for a long time. I've had many. This is just a baby of a plant that I bought like four years ago. It has always been really easy for me personally to keep. I don't think they need as much humidity as some other ones, problematic ones that I'm going to. This one tends to produce a lot of corms for me. I just made a couple of videos actually repotting this one. And I, there were so many corms that I just left them in there and pretended it, they were not there. I was like, I don't want them. I don't need more plants. I actually have around five of them total, and they have more than three leaves um, in total, all of them each. But 
I have around five of them total um, and I don't need any more. This is a plant that probably you've owned and if you've struggled with it, it probably struggled because it needed more light. Surprisingly, I find it to not be lower light, which you would think. Um, it tends to be pretty light and nutrient um, intensive. This plant, unlike Maharani, when it put out blooms, um, when I got it to that size, it was putting out one to two blooms, but then it would not create a new leaf forever. Like the blooms would just, well, the inflorescences would just sort of like stay there. Um, and that made it into not such a fun plant. So overall, I would rate this plant a seven out of 10 because while it's really beautiful, it's super soft. I find it to be really easy to multiply and hold some leaves. I think it's a difficult plant to get really pretty when it gets really, really big. I think this plant, once it gets to flowering size, it loses a lot of its steam because it creates big gaps in between the inflorescences and the, the actual leaves. And I don't think it looks as appealing in my opinion, but this plant comes in one of the most beautiful variegated versions that I know, which is the Alocasia Black Velvet Pink. I mean, look at that. It also comes in a Albo white version. I personally think the pink one is the one that I want. They go around 150 to 200, maybe even more for like a more established plant. But that's where you can find probably a corm or like a really, really one leaf um, going for. So I am waiting for that to come to me. Um, it is already in tissue culture. So the prices are just crashing down. And the more people get all these variegated alocasias, the more they multiply and the more the price will come down. So if you've been waiting for a variegated alocasia reginula like the pink, just have a little more patience. I guarantee that within a year, you're going to see that just flooding the market because they're coming. This is Alocasia mellow or rugosa. That's also what they called it. This is another plant that I think it's really good because it holds its leaves for a long, long time. Like the leaves that I've had in this plant are literally like at least six or seven months old. This is the plant that ended up having a bunch of corms that I bought in that grocery store. The corms just multiplied like crazy and I ended up getting like 15 <laughs> mellows. But what I have noticed about it is that it takes a while, a long time to put out new leaves the bigger it's getting. And also whenever you repot it, it tends to go into a shock stasis because every single one of my corms, once they get big enough that need to be put into a plant and have its own sort of three inch pot, I move it in there and then they stop producing leaves for the longest time, or they might drop it. This one, when I put it into this mixture of pond and leca, because all of my plants are in semi-hydro, it also stopped putting out new leaves. So it has not put out any new growth like in at least four months but it hasn't lost the other growth either. I think what this plant probably needs is a prayer. <laughs> no, I'm actually not sure what it wants. Um, I think humidity wise, it's fine. I'm not seeing the lack of humidity. Um, I think nutrients, it gets nutrients every time. Maybe less light. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, if you have any tips for mellow, I would love it. Technically this is mellow light because that is the term that the company was using whenever they branded it. But I haven't really seen a lot of people call it that or it being an actual cultivar. So I just consider this to just be like a, a base mellow. I still believe that this plant is like a six um, because it takes really long time to grow new leaves and it's still not as vigorous and resistant and resilient as the hybrid, which is Maharani. So if you have to pick between Alocasia mellow, which gives you a very similar fantasy as Maharani, except it doesn't have the white venation like in, in, inside, um, I think I would go for Maharani over this. I love this plant and I have a bunch of them. Um, so I'm not, I will not get rid of it. It was just a good experience to own. And it really looks really weird. This plant really looks like rhinoceros skin. So I, I understand why it was kind of like called that. Um, I wish it had a cooler name, sort of like a dragon name instead of the gray dragon being Maharani. This plant actually also comes in variegated versions. I have seen it in a Albo version mostly. Um, and also in an Orea version. I think the Albo is the prettiest, but I think this plant compared to Maharani is probably going to give you the same Albo experience, but a lot slower growth. And whenever it puts out a whole like white leaf, like you're basically like in danger zone because you don't know when the next one is going to come. If you have this plant variegated, let me know what's been your experience with variegated mellow. This plant is Alocasa Chienlii or Antoro Velvet. This is not an easy plant. So 
I wasn't sure how I was going to be rating sort of the order of plants, but I decided to not put a specific order. So, you know, you're going to get plants that are difficult and then some other ones that are easy, just all mixed in together. This plant I would consider to be in my top three of most difficult plants, particularly when you need to repot it. So this, this plant is, is not most difficult dramatic to grow um, this is when it's small, it's or to look like this, and it creates it a very tight kind of like rosette, in which all the leaves kind of come out, just how pointing up, it, and it well, doesn't really back sprawl time, out as week. much as other ones. But it will get root bound really fast, and that's what happened to the first version of this. This is actually a corm from that original one. It got root bound. I decided to repot it. And it completely crashed. This is my allocation. And that plant black. crashed in 24 hours. It went from looking like this to looking like this, and then to being completely knocked out and dead. Um, it has been one of the quickest alocasias that I had melt, going from perfectly fine to I'm not happy and I'm dead. Record, record time. Um, so that made me be super, super wary of it. The leaves are incredible. They're velvety, they're soft. It has this purpleness into the stem. Like I understand why we all want this plant. But just know that this, oh, there we go. So just know that this plant is going to require a lot more humidity. It's going to require a amount of light where it's not too much, but not too little. Because if you give it too much, the leaves will burn in the tip, like a, a yellowness to it. Um, but if you give it too little, the leaves just get kind of, uh, they don't fill out as fast. So it grows a lot slower. So I'm still trying to figure out what is the best light for it. What I learned was that you should have this plant in pond or in a soil mix, soilless mix, mostly because I think it really requires the roots to be humid consistently. I think what made my other one crash once it got root bound is I think it got a little too dry and the roots did not like getting dry and they bailed. So you need something that holds a lot more moisture than Leca. Leca is fantastic and I love it, obviously, but Leca does not do really well at holding moisture once it begins to get under the level. Like it loses moisture really, really fast. There's so many spaces in between it, which makes it great, but also lose moisture fast. So I find um, this kind of pawn to just take a lot longer to lose all of its moisture. So it gives you more time to stay on top of it. Um, and that is the tip that I would recommend for this is put it into a greedy sort of mixture. Um, that it stays moist but not too moist that it rots but don't let it dry out i am 85 percent sure that the reason my other one crashed and has struggled so bad is because the roots got too dry so if you have this plant and honestly not a lot of people on youtube publicly post about it and i think it's because we all struggle with it but if you have this plant let me know what do you recommend what are you doing do you agree that you think it like it needs a greater constant moisture or is yours a little more forgiving than mine? And tell me, do you repot it and it not crash? Because that is the one thing that I think just hates, this plant hates is getting its roots touched. So when you repot it, you're probably gonna crash this plant. Now, this plant comes in a few variegated versions that I find to be incredible, um, particularly the pink one. I have my fave bestie, like she, she has the most incredible variegated alocasias ever, and her Antoro velvets are just incredible like jaw-dropping incredible that is a plant that i personally would like just as a masochist just me suffering for myself i would love to be able to buy it because the pink looks so pretty but i right now it's gonna be a pain in the plant because this is difficult i would rate this plant a three out of ten um because it's made me suffer it's made me um uh, feel victimized it made me feel uh, incompetent. So yeah, so I would consider this plant to be fairly difficult. Um, I would not recommend this for a beginner, but if you find one that is big enough and established, I mean, you might as well just buy it because they're running for like $30, $40 and then just enjoy it while it slowly dies. <laughs> mm, or maybe you'll find your groove, um, but I would not pay too much for this plant because it's really, really um, delicate. Up next comes the first of the Bagindas. This is Alocasia Baginda Dragon Scale. We're struggling. We are struggling. This is another plant that did not enjoy transitioning from soil, soilless, into a uh, pond. Actually, it went to Leca first. So I put it in Leca and it just stopped growing. It gave me one leaf that looked really promising and then just crashed. When I checked the roots, I realized that it was just 
really rotted in a inconsistent kind of way so the bottom part of the roots were really new but the middle ones were kind of rotted so i was just pulling out roots from like the middle of the base i got a bunch of forms from it um, and then i just filled it back up with pond because what i'm thinking was happening is was i don't know it was just struggling with the transition into semi-hydro and i assume pond would be an easier step down than leka this plant has just not been happy um thank god it multiplied and it gave me some corms which are doing a lot better but yeah these are leaves are super old it's later latest growth is super super little um which is a shame because out of the two dragons i have been the most successful with this one i already got it to blooming size i already got it to this i mean look how beautiful it used to be it used to be a probably like a grandmother of this plant um so i know i can get it to be the prettiest i'm just not sure this plant is going to be the one just because it had the transition indoors i have a lot more confidence in some of its corms they're already growing in the same conditions as you know they're going to stay so i think those will have a better shot however this is a plant that has already bled all the way down the tissue culture line and is now readily available as a variegated tissue culture this is the baginda obviously albo because it's putting out like that but I'm going to be honest, um, sometimes some of them look a little bit yellowy. So I'm not really sure if the tissue cultures, they kind of just split themselves into these ones are more yellowy and these ones are more white, or if there's an actual sort of line of tissue cultures or a uh, tissue cultures elbow. This plant I got on plant Palm Story as a poo, so it was contaminated and I paid less, I want to say like $15, and I have been able to grow it like this. So I'm really happy with it. And like I said, I believe that Baginda is not the hardest of Alocasias to keep. I just have not had the best luck with the other one. But this one is looking incredible. I also got another poo piece um, of a variegated Baginda that actually ended up multiplying into four plants. I'm playing the footage right there. And I'm going to sort of go with the experiment of seeing how unstable this variegation truly is. You can see that some of them are having really white leaves, other ones a little bit less. So as they grow and they multiply, because you know they're going to multiply, um, I'm going to keep you posted on how I find this particular variegation to be, how easy it is, um, and if I recommend for you to have it. This plant you can probably get for around $50 from this size to $120. It really depends on the variegation, but I think as long as it's established, you'll be fine. This plant is still sitting on 100% fluval stratum, which is what I now grow most of my corms in. It's going to be a mixture of fluval and maybe some perlite. Um, that just finds, to me, to be the easiest way of securing the root growth. And then I'm going to transfer it into pond and hope that I don't disturb the, the roots too much <laughs> because I don't want this plant to crash. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I have a lot of hopes for them. So let me know, do you have one of these? How much did you pay? Is that something you're interested in? I think this is one of those variegated jewel alocasias that are pretty affordable now and so far it's been worth it i would consider alocasia dragon scale um, to be around a six of difficulty just because i have found so much success with the this version in the past but also i have struggled so much to size it so much to transition it that that has really docked a lot of points of my experience so far with alocasia baginda now the flip side of the dragon scale is going to be the silver dragon this is also baginda this particular cultivar or type just tends to be a lot more silver so it's considered its own separate plant and i will agree with it this plant i actually got to a pretty fairly big size but it also crashed that plant just struggled i think transitioning again from soil into um leka so i ended up trying to rescue it all the roots just went to not good and i ended up getting all of these corms um from it the original like chunk is still in a prop box you know hoping for the best but it has at least now multiplied into a bunch of them um this one here is another silver dragon it is not related to the one that crashed and all the other corms this is one that was from a variegated um, mum that i just got as a corm from like nothing and it did not come out variegated which was a bummer it has a tiny little speckle in one of the leaves so you never know maybe one in the future will be a more variegated -y. um this plant the the silver dragon also comes variegated it looks a lot more yellow more orea than the dragon scale so you can see some footage of it i have also seen some that are a little more white but i will say out of the two i personally find the green scale to have a prettier variegation um but i still hope this one gives me something 
something. Like, give, give me more than a speckle and maybe I'll love you. I would rate Silver Dragon like a 4 out of 10 because it has not been the easiest of plants and I've had it for years. I've always struggled ticing up this plant. I always struggle making it look super, super pretty. And I see all these people succeeding online. I see the big box stores having like an ocean of them that are just beautiful. So I know I have potential with it. Just Silver Dragon has not been um, the easiest for me. This is my Alocasia Aslanii, and oh, I'm so proud of this plant. Look at that. One, two leaves, three leaves, four leaves, a baby leaf, and it has a new one coming out. Um, having five leaves on this plant has been like an achievement. It, I have never had it uh, hold this many. It is a plant that I wanted for so long, and it has a thousand percent live up to its expectations when it comes down to the beauty. It really doesn't like it truly shines when you put a flash on it because that makes all of the iridescent pinkish pigments really pop so i think this plant needs flash in order to like be really really pretty but just overall it has not been a tough experience i know a lot of people struggle with this plant and i'm going to give you a little tea i think the answer for it is humid this plant loves to keep its feet wet the game you're playing with aslanii is if you get this plant dry you lose that's it. If this plant's humidity is up and down, you lose. And some people are like, well, mine rots, mine this, mine that. But when I do, you do the research on when the, where this plant originally comes from, I am not surprised that it tends to want to keep its feet wet. Again, it's coming from a lowland rainforest that is a very greedy kind of soil. So humid, constant water, constant rain is sort of what it likes. It doesn't want to be sitting in water, obviously. That's why I think the reservoir work really well because you have that one um, wick that is just constantly keeping the, the pond moist, as you can see on the side, um, and you just really like that. So I just make sure to keep the reservoir like built up to here, never within the soil, just right under. And so far, I've had a lot of success with it. So that is my recommendation. If you're struggling with Aslanii, is try to put it in semi-hydro and try to stay on top of its watering schedule to not let it dry out and always keep it in a, a reservoir with water and a moist wick sort of like state. Overall, so far I would rate this plant a 8 out of 10 just because I have not had any difficulties with it. It did not struggle to be repotted. I repotted it from um, its normal plug into Leca with, with perlite. It grew really, really well. It actually got root bound and was pushing out into corms. I transitioned it from it to this one and it has not skipped the beat. It's putting on a new growth. It opened on a new leaf after. So overall, it has not been difficult to repot. It requires, I want to say, less light and more humidity than others. So this one is living in my um, IKEA cabinet. But light-wise, I think it's pretty average. It doesn't need low like Cuprea, but it doesn't need like too much light is going to burn the leaves. So you need to find a little bit of balance with it. But overall, it has not been difficult. It does put out a lot of corms for me. Um, so I do see a lot of little be babies that were all around and I got a few going in a prop box. So when it comes down to that, it has been pretty good. This plant comes in a few variegated versions. It comes in the pink version, which I think is the most breathtaking version of this because you can see all the red veination just in the leaf and it's just breathtaking beautiful. However, I think this plant also comes in a lot of like pretty middle of the road variegations in which you just get this splotchiness of green. And this plant just naturally has this um, sort of clear light sort of uh, tissue that's all around the leaf. So it gives it almost like a halo-y effect to it, which makes it really makes a nice contrast between the darkness of the leaf um, compared to that little white edge. And I find some of the variegated versions put color into the leaf in a yellowy kind of way. And it kind of looks more sick or it looks like a low variegation or to me it takes away from aslanii itself and that is not what you want from variega variegations you want a variegation to add to the plant not subtract to the plant and that to me is the biggest sort of criteria on whether or not i like a variegation or not and i find that many of the variegated aslanii take away from how beautiful this plant really is except the pink one <laughs> that one is a banger I would love to own a variegated uh, pink Aslanii, and I think this one so far has been a good experience for me to grow, and I will keep you posted on how many leaves I manage for it to get.
This is Alocasia flying squid. It actually comes from a muta mutation of Alocasia plumbae. I think it was being mass produced in a lab. One of them just looked like a chim chimera dwarf. They picked it, it turned out to be stable, and they created an entire line of plants with it. Now, while Alocasia plumbae, obviously, is not a Alocasia, a jewel Alocasia because it gets too big, I think this particular mutation should fit that criteria, and that's why I'm putting it in this video, and I'm going to update you on whether or not I change my mind in the future. The main reason is because it does not get too big. The biggest I have been able to see, and according to the internet, is like a foot, a foot and a half sort of length um, of these little uh, leaves, or an petiole, and the leaf is kind of difficult to distinguish when one ends and the other begins. Um, so I think it remains fairly compact. And that's why I consider this to be a, you know, a jewel alocasia. It is also sitting on a pond mix with some water. I don't have a lot of like insight on this plant because I literally just got it, but I am really happy to have it in my collection and it's unique. It's weird. It's different than everything else that I have. And you know, I love a good plant experience. So I cannot wait to see what journey um, I go with, with flying squid. Tell me um, if you have this plant, what are your thoughts? Do you have it? Uh, in a semi hydro mix do you think it does better in like a soilless has it grown to you um i would love to hear some feedback because i see people bring it up in lists because it looks cool but i don't see anybody talking about its difficulty or easiness um to grow them this is alocasia pink dragon i think it's actually a, like morocco um or something like that a cultivar they just called pink dragon i know in my other video i said that i would never want to have this plant anymore ever <laughs> because I already had it once and it was an awful experience. Um, this plant just never grew. It didn't like the soil and didn't do anything for me. So I have seen a lot of people succeed with it. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot. I ended up getting a corn for free. And I was like, listen, I love free. So I will give this plant a world. This is the only alocasia that I have that is sitting in a non-reservoir containment. So it's an actual um, sort of glass, container and I just fill it with a bottom of leka and then I put a little bit of perlite and then I put pond and I just make sure that the leka part is always sitting in water because that is what I think was the key to my failure was really inconsistent waterings so when I got it I thought you know what this plant needs this plant needs higher humidity and it needs constantly stay wet so that is what I have done so far so far I've had you know as much success that I've had with pink dragon it has a new uh, leaf coming out. Oh, you can see it right, right there. It's unfurling. Unfortunately, it didn't unfurl in time for this video. You have the older one, and then the oldest is kind of like just slowly fading out, um, but nothing too crazy. So if you have Pink Dragon, please let me know if you think this plant is just difficult and I'm not crazy, or if I'm just had really bad luck with it. And also, how do you think it likes the moisture in its roots? Um, do you think it helps, or am I just like setting up this plant for like root rot? This plant actually comes in also a few versions of variegation. And the reason I don't own this variegated is mostly because I have had such a bad experience with the normal version. I would rate this plant a five out of 10. Now nah, I would rate this plant a four out of 10 just because I have not had a good experience with it. I cannot succeed in sizing it up. I cannot succeed in keeping it alive and happy, but a lot of other people do. So I think I'm the problem. This, like I said, the re only reason I don't have variegated is because it's so difficult because you can find the Orea version, which kind of looks a little sick. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I don't love it. Um, but you can find that for like 50 to $75 for a pretty good size corming plant. Um, I have seen the corms or the one leafers go for like from 20 to $30. So the variegated versions are out there, particularly the Orea. I have not particularly seen a pretty, like a pink one, right? You would assume like the pink dragon would have a pink variation, but so far I have not seen it. I have seen some wider looking ones, but honestly it was not really promising. So I'm sticking to right now, you will most likely find the Orea version of this. This is Alocasia blue dragon and that's it. <laughs> I know like in my other video, I was like, I have no idea what this plant is. Is it a hybrid? Is it a species? Like, what is it? And I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100 on it either, quite just yet. So I have asked every single person that sells this plant, whether it's on Facebook, Palm Story, or Instagram. You have received a DM from me asking, hey, is this plant a hybrid or a species? Most people are like, I'm going to check with the person I bought it, and they never get back to me. But I did get a, quad a quadrinera, 
and another person that replied basically telling me that this is a species and that is just an unnamed unclassified species that has been just hitting the circulating in just the cultivation sort of like markets so i'm not sure it could become something else in the future but right now it's just alocasia black dragon if i had to put my money on it i think it's going to be closely related to the regine or nebula just based on how it grows and develops but you know i'm gonna keep you posted for sure this plant i have seen some really cool footage it creates these really really pretty lobes and it has a very leathery texture so the thickness i would say is very similar to the maharani so it is thick it just doesn't have the roughness and the texture on the actual leaf it's a lot more waxy and a lot more smooth but overall the thickness of it it's pretty chunky um it is putting out a new leaf so we'll see how well it sizes up all the other leaves that you see here have been around for a long time like i want to say at least six months and the reason it got repot so it wasn't a smaller pot and it was just not putting out new growth it just stays stagnant with just these three leaves month after month after month eventually i decided to just repot it into this uh, five incher with some leca and with some pawn and some perlite and then i stuck it in the cabinet so if you have Alocasia Blue Dragon, I'm assuming that you probably agree that it needs a little bit of higher humidity than the other ones. So this one, along with um, my Aslanii, they live in my cabinet um, full time just because I think they just need the higher humidity in order to have a vigorous growth. So even if you have the nutrients and even if you have the light, um, I did not get this leaf until um, it went inside the cabinet. So tell me, do you have Blue Dragon? Um, what's your experience been with it? Do you have any insight? Like, am I wrong? Is it not a species, is it a hybrid? You know, I love to learn more about all of these plants. So if you have any insight on any plants, like if I'm mistaken, please correct me. I just wanna learn and I just wanna make sure I'm passing down the correct information. So if you have any insight on Alocasia Blue Dragon, I am all ears and we, I'm sure everybody would love to learn more from it. This is Alocasia Nebula. And this alocasia is a bleep. Um, I have really struggled with this alocasia. So as you remember, there's two kinds that I had. I had the nebula imperialis that I got from a plug. And I also had the other nebula that I rescued from the grocery stuff that was looking rough. So both of them had the exact same outcome, which was they completely crashed. I don't know how, because they crashed under completely different circumstances. The one that was big, it just struggled overall. It never put out new growth and eventually it just got a little root rot. And when I removed it, the entire thing just collapsed. I ended up just throwing it into a prop box, giving it a prayer. Most of it rotted away and eventually you had a little tiny sprout come out with a new leaf. I'm showing the footage. So this is what's left of that particular um, Alocasia nebula. Then the other one that was a lot smaller, it was growing just fine, just like this one. You know, you see the leaves. Um, and then I think it got root bound. I think it got a little too big and it did not enjoy being root bound. And I tried to repot it and that did not work out. All I accomplished was just running the whole thing down to a tiny little form. Then I tried putting it in a water uh, container. It was actually the same one that the pink dragon is in. And then I put like a bubbler underneath nutrient water. And that was my attempt at trying to save the roots of this plant or the stem or the growth. I just basically delayed it crashing by like three days, but eventually it just rotted. It just ended up being a tiny little knob um, and it just gave me a couple of forms. So currently, right now, I have three plants. No, I have four. So I have a total of four Alocasia Nebula. This one is for sure like the base Nebula. There's some other ones that I'm not really sure if they're the Imperialis and it's different or if I ended up just getting two different species misclassified. Because then I had somebody else being like, no, Imperialis is also like the Regine. And I was like, wait, no, like that's different. And then somebody was like, no, the Nebula Elaine is the Regine. I was like, listen, you're confusing the out of me. Like, can we just agree on what Nebula is and what Regine is? And if there's something else that's different, <laughs> you know, in there in the mix, um, it just makes it difficult for everybody involved. So this plant I would consider to be the second most difficult plant that I own just because I failed so greatly with it. But I know a lot of people succeed. 
And like, this one so far is doing well. Look how good the root is. It has just been growing in pond. It does not seem to be getting root bound on the actual pot. It just pushed growth down here. So, so far we're just holding our breath with this particular plant because I think this is the best shot that I have at having a pretty one. It also went into the cabinet. I don't know if it's more, uh, humidity, the thing that made the other ones just burn. I don't think so. I think it was the roots. I, th I don't think this plant handles its roots being touched at all. So I'm now trying it in the uh, IKEA cabinet just because I really want to succeed with this plant um, and I'm not, not sure what else to do for it. I have some friends and actually I feel like I feel victimized by Alocasia nebula. Please share with me if you also struggle with this because I see so many people that have the variegated versions. So there it comes in a variegated uh, pink. It comes in a variegated elbow and it comes in this variegated yellow e green ish. It's almost like a mint uh, version of it. And it's beautiful. And they get the be such beautiful lobes. I mean, I'm talking about, look at the footage. It's getting like the most beautiful lobes. It has the most beautiful color. It's, it's just breathtaking. So I want to succeed with Nebula. Some research that I did when I was crashing is this is another plant that comes from a limestone based like soil. So a lot of it has to do, I think, and it being in Lekka, it was not getting the correct nutrients. I think it got not happy. I don't know. At this point, like I'm reaching. But what I do know is that this plant lacks a more basic kind of soil um, because that's what limestone is going to do. So that's what I gave it into pond. And I don't always water it with nutrients. I'm trying to do like a reverse osmosis and then nutrient water and see if that helps. Um, but I don't know. This is a plant that the information is a little too mixed and I just don't have a clear direction with it. So I find it to be very, very difficult. And now in the name of science, I had to purchase Alocasia regine, right? Because if somebody is going to be telling me that the Imperialis is regine and that the other one is the normal nebula, well, guess what? I'm going to go by the, neb the regine and tell you exactly what I think is the difference between these plants. So the seller of this plant actually also owned a or had a listing for Alocasia nebula Elaine. So I was really excited and I bought one Elaine and one Regine. And then they canceled the order for the Elaine. So I don't know if it was a miss uh, sort of post in which Elaine and Regine is the exact same thing. And they realized that when they're filling out my order, I don't know if they were just out of stock. So they just canceled it. But the point is I got that order refunded. And because they were sending such a small plant for the Regine, they ended up selling, sending two of them. So one of them has two leaves and the other one just has one. Um, that works perfectly fine for me. That's, that's a difficult, well, Nebula was difficult. And if people cannot tell the difference between Nebula and this, I'm going to assume that this one is difficult too. So I'm really happy to have two of them that I can just put into my cabinet and then the other one in a more like room environment, like a 50% humidity, and then see which one does better. Both, both of them are sitting on uh, pawn because I am not playing games. Like we're just doing pawn with the, all of these alocasias um, because that just seems to be the way to go. It is my homemade pawn. And if you want me to make a video, just walking you through how I make my pawn and you know what I do with it, like let me know down below because I would love to share that with you. I just don't know how much interest there is um, for you know my homemade recipe. This plant actually comes from one of those like world fairs. It was called Regine because it comes from the fair that was given to the Russian queen and king from like the late 1800s. That's why I read online. So basically it's Regine because of the word Latin Regina, which is queen. Um, so yeah, so I, I think this is a plant that was like royalty back in the day. Um, and I guarantee they killed a bunch of them. So I'm really interested to see what is the difference between this nebula and imperialis is there anything like you know there's a video coming in the future um because i want to know so tell me do you have a locasia regine is it different that um that nebula is it different that the imperialis like uh, tell me the story what are you learning what do you know um i just want to know as much as i can from this plant i'm really excited to own it up next this is a locasia bisma platinum Again, I'm not sure if Bisma is one and Platinum is a different one. I bought this as Alocasia Bisma Platinum. I really think they look really similar if they are a cultivar and like a base. So I'm just going to go with the same plant. So this is one that also I found to be a really fast grower. It grew really fast when it was in, in the plug. 
and then eventually I think it got root bound or it stopped growing. So it did not put out any new leaves for months and months and months. Eventually I decided to just take the jab and size it up and repot it into a bigger container, also with some leka and then having um, the pond mix on top. And so far it has been doing okay. It gave me a brand new leaf. It activated a little corm that was in it. And then I can see a new leaf pushing from the petiole of the latest one. So I think we're going in the right direction. This is a plant that is also sitting in my IKEA cabinet, but I think, I don't know if humidity is the key with this. I'm not quite sure. I'm still working on it. Um, it has multiplied fairly well. So I own, I want to say, a total of like four or five bismas from this. And all of them are growing really well. So I'm, I'm sure I'm going to end up with a really beautiful specimen. I'm not sure which one it is. All of them are now sitting in pond. This is the only one that has this sort of like um, perlite like a pond mixture and uh, just because it was a transition period. This it actually has some really pretty variegations. I have seen it in a Orea and I will say out of all of them this is the one that I think has the prettiest Orea variegation and I have also seen it in an albo form. Um, I kind of think like there should be some kind of mint version of this sort of like there's a mint version of the Bagindag dragon scale. Um, but yeah, if you have or you know of any cool variegations that I did not mention for Bisma, let me know. Um, it's a beautiful plant. It's very different than my heterophyllas. Um, people were thinking they were similar, but it's not. I want to see how different this is from Reversa, though. Alucasia Bisma, I would consider to be around a 5 out of 10, just because it had such good growth at the beginning, but then something happened and it stopped growing, and it has been a really slow grower ever since. But again, I don't think I have enough data. I haven't had it long enough, um, but so far it's fine. And then last and least, look at that. Oh, painful, painful. <sighs> this is my most difficult alocasia, AKA, uh, actually I feel like the name lives up to it because it's been fucking hell. This is alocasia infernalis capit, black panther, whatever. Um, it's infernalis capit beautiful plant i also thought i was so proud of myself because i got this plant to have like four leaves it was sizing up it was creating a beautiful rosette and it was just great and then out of the blue the new growth was coming in coming in coming in and then it dried out and then once that new growth dried out and died half coming out of the plant that was the death nail that whole plant crashed within a day so i don't know if it got root rot because when i checked it you know the roots were fine i don't know if it got root bound i don't know if it just got too much light i don't know if it got unhappy i have no clue look at the footage this plant went from being like beautiful perfect to dead um and it has just become a tiny little knob i have seen it being sold of course by other sellers for around like 20 25 dollars but i have not purchased a replacement for it mostly because as you see in the close-up this plant already has a or is activating a couple of corms and growth points. So I am at least going to get three more plants from it. I just think it's going to take a long time. I want the multiple plants because I want to test out different um, environments and then seeing which one it likes the most. I'm sticking to Leka. Sorry, sorry. I'm sticking to Pond because I don't want to mess around with that part of it. But I think I'm going to give some less light, sort of like the cuprea. I think I'm going to put some in more um, humidity inside the cabinet. And maybe the other one I'm going to put back into the shelf where this one used to be and it was thriving. And then just see if maybe it was my watering um, schedule that sucked. Again, I think this plant, along with Nebula and along with um, Antoro Velvet, the reason why they crashed and completely went to shit was because they dried out and they do not want to be dried out. And I think drying out is what just was my downfall, um, which I know is a little bit sort of counterintuitive because we all think alocasia is just rot from too much water. Um, but I think there's a middle ground that you just need to learn how to dance with the species and the size container that you're dealing with. So far, it's okay. It's pushing. Um, I have seen a variegated version of this, but not a pretty one. So here's the footage that I'm pulling up for it. It's okay. It, I, it's a difficult plant. I would not spend hundreds of dollars on a corn for it to be variegated for it to die. I need to master the base before I try to get like the upgrade. So tell me, do you have a Locasia Infernalis, Capit or whatever? Um, how many leaves do you have on it? What are you doing for it to succeed? 
Do you think it needs more light or less light? That's definitely a species that I, I, I it's a one out of 10. That's how difficult that plant is. That plant is a one out of 10. So that covers all of the jewel alocasias that I own. So as you know, there's still a couple that are not in my collection, mostly because I am too cheap to pay for them to be shipped by themselves. That's the truth for it. So the first one is Alocasia scalprum. I have seen this in multiple sellers and I really want this plant. I think it looks beautiful. It has this really elongated, deep green shape. And I just want to see how it compares to my Baginda. I want to see how it compares to my Sinuata. So I really want to have this plant in my collection. Right now you can find some plugs for like $10 or I've seen some established ones for 20. But again, no seller has had it at the same time as I'm buying some other stuff. Alucas' scalpum comes in multiple variegations. One of them is going to be the Orea. Um, and then I have also seen a more Albo-y one. I have yet to see one that is like jaw-droppingly beautiful, but they're really expensive. So that is the part where I need to figure out if the base one is easy before I even venture in the other ones. Alocasia clipiolata or the green shield. That is a very unique one that I think I want to have um, to compare to my red secret and then just have them as a, as a comparison. I have seen some people selling corn for like $5. I have seen some other ones selling like established plants for like 20, 30. So it's not a really expensive plant um, to have. I just have not been able to find a seller that had it at the same time that I'm purchasing other stuff. So I just make like an add-on. Um, I just don't want to go out of my way to just purchase it um, for, by itself. I have not seen any variegation of Alocasia clipiata. I'm sure it's out there. I'm pulling up some footage if I found any. Um, I think this plant would look really cool with a white variegation, but most likely you're going to get a lime green just based on what I think of the components of the leaf. And then the last plant that is in my wish list and I really want to have, and I'm upset that I cannot find it. It's like one of those obscure plants that people had in their collection and it was in circulation many years ago. And then it just, I guess it's difficult. So people did not keep it. And now it's out of circulation for most sellers. And that is Alocasia reversa. Reversa is one that looks really similar to Bisma. I think it looks really similar to, they say um, the black velvet, but I think people are tripping. I've, I don't see any reverse of the black velvet so it looks a lot more like a reverse of the bisma um so i want to see what's the difference with it how easy is it to keep i have seen this plant being sold from 80 dollars, which i was like oof that's a little too rich for my for my for my blood um when it comes down to some alocasias so i have like a strong 20 dollars for it um and that is basically my budge so if you find or you know that this plant being sold for like 20 dollars um send me a dm because i would love to own this plant so there you have it. These are all of the jewel alocasias that I own and then the three that I'm basically left. Tell me, am I missing any jewel alocasias in my collection? And if I did not talk about your favorite alocasia that you consider to be jewel, most likely is because I think of it as a little too big for them to fall under this category. So you can find all of them in my other video, which is just all of the alocasias that are not jewel alocasias. And you can watch that one Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and YouTube thinks that this video is the one for you.